guys, it's Emily, and today I'm here to bring you Friday Reads. It's been two weeks since I did Friday Reads, but I haven't been reading that much. Um, I've still been watching the Olympics, and I've been working more than usual because we have a person that left, and I've also been working on a personal project after work, so I've just been busy, and I've only read two full books in the last two weeks. Um, I'm actually pre-filming this because when you see this, I'll be um, visiting my brother over a long weekend. So I'm not at home right now when you're watching this. Uh, but anyway, so let's just get right into it, shall we? So the first book that I want to mention is that I DNF'd the book. I DNF'd The Hatred of Poetry by Ben Lerner. Um, I've shown this in my videos before. So it's that little green book. Um... I, this is an 86 page book and you think I would have been able to read it pretty quickly. I actually planned to read it like over the course of an afternoon on like February 18th and I read the first 20 pages and I was just not enjoying it and so I sort of flipped a bunch of pages and I skimmed the part about Emily Dickinson and then I skimmed the part about Walt Whitman and I just decided I didn't care enough about the book. Um, Horner is trying to explain why a lot of people don't like poetry, and his whole theory is that it's because poetry can never accurately um, explain what the writer's trying to explain, and it's like, that's my whole reason I don't like poetry, because it's like, why don't you just write, you know, like a novel or something that will actually tell what you're trying to say, instead of using convoluted language and things like that. So, uh, I did enact that book, I didn't enjoy it. It's, you know, it's only 86 pages long, so you might enjoy it, and it's certainly not that big of a time commitment. I just didn't care enough to keep going. So I then read The Music's Chat by Rachel Joyce, and I did finish this one, but it was, again, kind of a disappointment to me. Um, this is taking place in 1988 in the East End of London, and Frank is a record shop owner, and Frank is a very emotionally stunted person. He had a very close relationship with his mom, and then his mom died, and once that happened, he sort of decided it wasn't worth ever loving someone again because he doesn't want to get hurt when they die. So he's very, you know, closed off, but he has this talent for picking the right record for a person, no matter what they're going through. He's like automatically can tell what kind of record they need. And so he, in doing that, he owns a record shop, as I said. And this record shop is in a like strip mall with a bunch of other businesses. There's a funeral home and like a religious gift store and a tattoo parlor and a bar. And so all of these characters affect Frank's life. And one day, um, a girl in a green coat, Eloise, or maybe it's Eloise, Eloise, comes in and Frank immediately falls in love with her. But because it's, he's so closed off, he can't tell her what he feels. And so, uh, El, El, I don't know how you say her name, Eloise, Elise, Elise asks Frank to give her music lessons to like teach her about important kinds of music and things like that. So through the course of these lessons, they start to get to know each other and then Frank, again, is so, so incapable of telling her his feelings that she tells him her feelings and he can't even respond. And so, and then, so he, they, you know, don't see each other for 20 years. And then at the last part of the book, they are reunited after 20 years. And so it's sort of about how Frank learns to love. But it's also about how these relationships affect Frank and his mom, and uh, it's just, it was okay. I only gave it two stars. I was rather disappointed, and I, I found the plot to be completely implausible, for one thing. The fact that, like, they would fall in love so quickly, and then when they are been um, separated for 20 years, they immediately, you know, reconnect so instantly, and then I'm also not, like, a huge m music person, like, I listen to music, but it's not something that, like, you know, I don't, like, in this, they're talking about, like, music should move you, and music should cause you to, like, make a change in your life, and music should do this, and music should do that, and I just, I've never had any of that reaction to music, so to me, it was sort of, like, hyperbole, and Rachel Joyce obviously did 
a a lot of research on the music in this book, and you know the, there was a playlist that was going with it, and I did listen to most of the playlists, and it was good. But again, like I would, they would describe this song and like their intense reaction to it, and I'd go listen to the song at the playlist, and it wouldn't really. It would be good, but it wasn't like this. I wasn't having the same experience as they were having. So uh, I only gave this two stars. It was okay. And there's probably like, if you're a really big music lover, you'd probably love it. But to me, it was just okay and kind of implausible. But I just like the setting, like the um, strip mall where the record shop is and all the characters. And they were really cool and fun and all that. But the actual plot and the actual like music theme didn't work that well for me, but it was still okay, and it was a good book, you know, a well-written book, I should say, but yeah, it was always fair for me. I then started and finished Still Life by Louise Penny, which is the first book in the Inspector Gamache series, and if you saw my March Mystery Madness TBR, you know I was planning to read this for that, and like literally the day I filmed that, that night, I was looking for something to read, and I was in the mood for something a little bit lighter, and so I picked this up, and then I started reading it, and the day I posted the um, TBR was the day I finished it, so uh, I'm going to read the second book for the um, March Mystery Madness because Rachel was talking about the entire series, not just this one book. But anyway, so this book is um, takes place in the small Canadian town of Three Pines. And by the way, I don't think I'd ever heard that this book takes place in Canada. I guess I always sort of thought it took place in Britain because people always seem to make it sound like it, but it's actually taking place in Canada, and it's actually a lot older than I remember ever hearing about. It was published in 2005, so it was, um, you know, it's over 10 years old, and I sort of got the impression that this was a newer series, but I guess that makes sense because there's so many books in this series now. But anyway, so Inspector Gamache is a, um, detective with the Montreal police and he's sent to this small town of Three Pines that doesn't have its own police force because a local retired school teacher and artist, Jay Neal, has been found murdered. Or Well, at first they think it's an accidental death because she's shot by an arrow in the heart and so they think it was a hunter that accidentally killed her and then it was just too scared to say anything. But then through the course of the book they start to think it might be a murder and so they're investigating the people of this small town, Three Pines, and uh, Jay just lived her entire life and so she knows everybody in the town and so there's actually quite a bit of there's quite a few motives that could have been responsible for the murder and so he's going around and this book is really interesting because it's not that much about the murder it's about um, Jane's relationship with the people in the town and you know how those relationships have changed as she's grown older and it's just a really great little book and I highly recommend it and I'm definitely looking forward to reading the second book during Marsh Mystery Madness and that one's called A Fatal Grace and it's just a really um, interesting mystery and it's really very cerebral, it's very interested in emotions and people's, um, you know, why people do the things they do, and it's just a really great book, and I, I highly recommend it. So this weekend, while I'm at my brother's, I'm taking two books to read, both of which you saw on my March Mystery Madness PBR. This March is coming up real quick. Um, and if by the time you see this, it'll have already occurred. It'll be March 2nd. So anyway, um, I'm planning to read this weekend Jane and the Wandering Eye by Stephanie Barron, which is the um, third Jane Austen mystery book. And I'm taking this because this is the only book on my March Mystery Madness PBR that my library doesn't have on ebook, so I can't ever read it at work if it's slow, so I'm going to read it this weekend. And then if I finish this book, I'm going to be reading... Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz, and this is a, there's an ebook of this at my work, so if I don't finish this over the weekend, I can continue reading it um, at work and, you know, at home as well. And I'm also going to be taking my Bible study book because I've been so busy with work and my personal project that um, I haven't I've been keeping up with that. So if I finish these two books, I'll be working on that. So that's all I've been doing and reading lately. And I hope everybody's been reading some great books. And happy March and happy start of March Mystery Madness. And I'm so excited. I'm going to be trying to do the Instagram challenge and be um, posting 
Twitter sprints, and then I'm also, of course, going to be working on posting my two mystery-related videos, and I'll still be doing Friday reads, and I'll do a wrap-up at the end of the month. So it's going to be a great old month, and I'm so excited. So I hope everybody's having a great day, and you have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!